Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community, where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Luke chapter 23, but before we get started, I want to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Luke chapter 23. Then the entire council took Jesus to Pilate, the Roman governor. They began to state their case. This man has been leading our people astray by telling them not to pay their taxes to the Roman government and by claiming he is the Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, You have said it. Pilate turned to the leading priest and to the crowd and said, I find nothing wrong with this man. Then they began insist then they became insistent. But he is causing riots by his teaching wherever he goes, all over Judea, from Galilee to Jerusalem. Oh, is he a Galilean? Pilate asked. When they said that he was, Pilate sent him to Herod Antipas, because Galilee was under Herod's jurisdiction, and Herod happened to be in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was delighted at the opportunity to see Jesus because he had heard about him and had been hoping for a long time to see him perform a miracle. He asked Jesus question after question, but Jesus refused to answer. Meanwhile, the leading priests and the teachers of religious law stood there shouting their accusations. Then Herod and his soldiers began mocking and ridiculing Jesus. Finally, they put a royal robe on him and sent him back to plot. Herod and Pilot, who had been enemies before, became friends that day. Then Pilot called together the leading priests and other religious leaders, along with the people, and he announced his verdict. You brought this man to me, accusing him of leading a revolt. I have examined him thoroughly on this point in your presence and find him innocent. Herod came to the same conclusion and sent him back to us. Nothing this man has done calls for the death penalty, so I will have him flogged, and then I will release him. Then a mighty roar rose from the crowd, and with one voice they shouted, Kill him, and release Barabbas to us. Barabbas was in prison for taking part in an in insurrection in Jerusalem against the government and for murder. Pilate argued with them because he wanted to release Jesus, but they kept shouting, Crucify him, crucify him. For the third time he demanded, Why? What crime has he committed? I have found no reason to sentence him to death, so I will have him flogged and then release him. But the mob shouted louder and louder, demanding that Jesus be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate sentenced Jesus to die as they demanded. As they had requested, he released Barabbas, the man in prison, for insurrection and murder. But he turned Jesus over to them to do as they wished. As they led Jesus away, a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, happened to be coming in from the countryside. The soldiers seized him and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd trailed behind, including many grief-stricken women. But Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are coming when they will say, Fortunate indeed are the women who are childless the wombs that have not borne a child, and the breasts that have, not, have never nursed. People will beg the mountains, fall on us, and plead with the hills, bury us. For if these things are done when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him. When they came to a place called the skull, they nailed him to the cross, and the criminals were also crucified, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. The crowd watched and the leader scoffed. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself if he, really, if he is really God's Messiah, the Chosen One. 
The soldiers mocked him too by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. A sign was fastened above him with these words, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed, So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself to us. By saving yourself and us too while you're at it. But the other criminal protested, Don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. By this time it was about noon and darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. The light from the sun was gone and suddenly the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn down the middle. Then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words he breathed his last. When the Roman officer overseeing the execution saw what had happened, he worshipped God and said, Surely this man was innocent. And when all the crowd that came to see the crucifixion saw what had happened, they went home in deep sorrow. But Jesus' friends, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph. He was a member of the Jewish High Council, but he had not agreed with the decision and actions of the other religious leaders. He was from the town of Arimathea in Judea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God to come. He went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Then he took the body down from the cross and wrapped it in a long sheet of linen cloth and laid it in a new tomb that had been carved out of rock. This was done late Friday afternoon, the day of preparation, as the Sabbath was about to begin. As his body was taken away, the women from Galilee followed and saw the tomb where the body was placed. Then they went home and prepared spices and ointments to anoint his body. By the time they were finished, the Sabbath had begun, so they rested as required by the law. Amen. So what did you think of Luke chapter 23? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were on the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. And if you've been blessed lately, let us know so that we can rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, make sure you're putting that in the comments too so we can pray together as a community. Okay, so Luke 23 starts off with um, Jesus' trial before Pilate. And this is a lot of back and forth where Pilate is trying, it, he's feebly trying to save Jesus. And um, I think that this is something that a lot of us as Christians go through on a daily basis with the secular world, um, just trying to affirm the fact that Jesus is the Messiah and we represent him, but being shut down by the world and not being willing to stand firm in our faith and be courageous and save Jesus as he has saved us. So save him in those circumstances when, you know, the world is calling us to fall into sin, but we need to stand firm in our spirit and not give in to what the people are saying or what the people are doing. We need to exhibit our authority. Um, Pilate could have exhibited his authority and not released Jesus to the people, but he chose to release Jesus to the people even though he knew he was innocent. And, um, you know, a lot of times we as Christians succumb to peer pressure and we fall into sin because we're not willing to stand firm in our faith and trust in Jesus. Um, and I think that it's just important that we don't you know, continue to do that, that we stand firm in our faith, that we don't fall into peer pressure and just go with the crowd. Um, because most of the time the crowd is led by the enemy. You know, it only takes a few people to incite a riot, you know, and then next thing you know, everyone's just following along and don't, and they don't even know why they're protesting or why they're following along. Um, you know, people just want something to believe in. They want somebody to go with and they often just go with whoever is the loudest instead of whoever is truly innocent and who is truly right. So I think it's just important that again we stand firm in our faith and hold true to Jesus. You know, claim him, you know, so that he will claim you in heaven. Um, the next section is the crucifixion. And again, this is just so sad. Um, and 
the part that I really wanted to point out what or really stood out to me today was that the daughters of Jerusalem don't weep for me but weep for yourselves and for your children and this is verse um, 28 and then it goes down and it says um, you know fortunate indeed are the childless and that's verse 29 and then in 30 it says people will beg the mountains fall on us and plead with the hills bury us um, and when I read that I'm just reminded of the turmoil in the world and just the way that depression and anxiety seems to be sweeping over our world I know it definitely swept over me and thankfully God pulled me out of the pit of despair his word you know staying in his word pulled me out um, and I think that it's it's pressuring a lot of people because those are you know those are the days it says for the day comes when people will say fortunate are the people who um, don't bring children into this horrible world and you know it's sad to say that but you know sometimes I felt that way about not wanting to have children because I don't want to bring children into a world so wicked and corrupt and just knowing where we're headed but at the same point you say I want to bring a child into this world so that they can be righteous and go to heaven so you know it's a double it's a it's you know a double-sided coin um but you know when i read that i'm just reminded of all the things that are going on and it says for these things were done when a tree is green what will happen when it's dry so you know imagining that all these things that were taking place while jesus the messiah was there in the flesh in front of these people so now us believers are called to believe in the things that we can't see but we really we we know like we know that Jesus is the Messiah and although we can't touch him in our in the flesh we can feel him inside of us you know the Holy Spirit is inside of us and we just have to trust in that and not let our spirit shrivel up and die um, we need to constantly be nourishing our spirit with the word so that we can live you know we can live with Christ and you know see that eternal life that's waiting for us um, so then um, in the next section well further down um, in verse 37 they're you know trying to pressure him into saving himself you know choosing his will over God's will and again this is something that will happen in in your daily life where you know the world will pressure you to succumb to your flesh um, instead of supporting you in your pursuit of your spirit and it's important that we try to surround ourselves with people who are you know pursuing Christ the same way we are and surround ourselves with people who um, you know are um, you know willing to help us fight our flesh and aren't trying to tempt us into our flesh and aren't trying to tempt us into our own will and instead are pushing us to pursue God's will for our lives um, so but I also like this option that you know in, in, in life God will always place people in your life to counteract those negative people he will put somebody positive and uplifting in your life as well and that's why the other criminal protested, don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. And that's just a reminder to be uplifting. Be that word of encouragement. Be somebody's strength when they don't have, have it because you are... Um, Christ is living in you and he's working through you to help other people and to guide other people and to uplift other people and just know that by doing that you will be remembered in heaven that God will be there Jesus will be waiting for you with open arms and it says you will be with him in paradise so just remember that and then um, the then it's this it's so sad the death of Jesus um, this is when the sanctuary was um, of the temple was torn down in the middle. So we have access to God directly through Christ um, dying on the cross for us. Um, and before we had to go through a priest, you know, for forgiveness um, to commune with God but now we can do it directly we can commune directly with God um, and he says father I entrust my spirit into your hands and um, and with the, the 
and with those words his last his he breathed his last breath and you know again that's something that you know i try to pray just to trust you know submit yourself to god um and trust your spirit and trust your life into god's hands and just you know stay along for the ride and see where he takes you you know don't get too hung up on your own thoughts or ideas of how you think your life should be or how you want your life to turn out and just trust god to lead you down the path that he wants your life to be um and then it's just sad because it says that when the roman officer overseeing the ex execution saw what happened he worshiped god and said surely this man was innocent so a lot of the times we realize after we have committed sin and after we have done wrong that god is truly the messiah and that jesus is is our savior um but it's just remember that it's never too late to worship god to repent of your sins until you're done until your last breath you know until you you have no more breath left in your body so you know every day make it a point to you know turn from your sins and you know seek God in everything that you do um, so then the next section is the burial of Jesus and again um, you know bless Joseph um, it says there was a good and righteous man named Joseph like bless him for taking care of Jesus in that moment um, for you know preparing a place for him um, for his body and you know following God's commands and what to do and the same thing that we need to do we need to take care of you know the Christ that lives within us we need to nourish that spirit and feed that spirit and take care of it um, you know before the coming of Christ so that's my interpretation of Luke chapter 23 I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it leave it in the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope you stay blessed stay in God's presence have a great rest of your day I love you.